Hello everyone and welcome to Jumper Man Tech where we specialize in HVAC but do everything DIY and today we have a service call for a Mitsubishi system. Thank you to everyone tuning into Jumper Man Tech. What a beautiful view of New York City. Today we have a service call for a Mitsubishi split system. Got quite some condensing units up here. Interesting, interesting. We got a complaint that the room thermostat doesn't seem to be operating properly, that the room temperature didn't seem to add up. Let's go ahead and investigate. All right, here we are at the thermostat. If you guys can see, it says the room is at 80 degrees and the set point is at 83. Before I started the video, I seen that room temperature jump up. I saw it at at the low 70s. Oh, look right there. This went temperature just went down to 78. So that's kind of auto ranging. Guys, I'm telling you right now, I came in here. It feels like a sauna in here. It is not 78 degrees. I see what they mean. It is definitely way hotter in here. All right, guys, I got a thermometer here. It's reading 96.1 degrees. It says it's 79 in here. 96.3.4, dear Lord. It feels seriously like a sauna in here. It's so hot. It is definitely not 79 degrees in this room. Unbelievable, 97 degrees. <laughs> this is crazy and rising, oh man. Our air handler is in the ceiling. We have a slim duct unit. Filters are a little dirty, but it's really not too bad. But man, there's like no space to really service this unit. Here's the board. Now, I can tell you one thing, this unit's definitely working. You can see the two pipes over there are cut off. And I guess they capped it off with a little bit of tape. <laughs> uh, there used to be fan call units in here, but I guess they upgraded it to this Mitsubishi unit. It's a nice drain. Look at that. It's a hose. Here's... Okay. Here's our panel. And it's always interesting to look at this. And also over here, they got these dip switches. You're gonna have to you're gonna want the right settings for the indoor and outdoor units for this to communicate properly but anyways the unit seems to be working it's just insanely hot in here but yeah here's the setup yeah all right yeah this sensor seems to be just kind of all over the place right there you just saw it go from 83 to 84 in the room but guys it's 98.8 .8 degrees <laughs> it's insane all right all right here's the off button we got to turn this thing off guys let's get into these settings this is a wired remote controller this has two wires and it's 12 volts dc if you want the model number it says it on the bottom and this is the par-40 maau i'm gonna go ahead online and get to the manual All right, I got the manual and this is kind of the area that I want to get into. And this is the function settings options. So the question is, where is this thing reading temperature? Is it at the indoor unit? Is there a thermistor inside there? Or is it using temperature from this wire controller itself? There's a built-in sensor in here as well. But if you look at mode two, I'm gonna give you guys a screenshot so you can see a little better, but Mode 2, it says the thermistor selection for the indoor temperature detection. That's, that's where we want to be. Where are we reading temperature? Is this thermostat bad or do we have improper settings that it's making this thing whack out a bit? So it says we can get an average temperature reading of the indoor units in operation. Should be only one circuit here though. Then it says the thermistor on the indoor unit to which the remote controller is connected. It says it's fixed. So I guess the thermistor on the indoor unit or 
This has a built-in sensor on the remote controller. This is the remote controller. I wonder what settings are we in? This is honestly a bit confusing at first, but to get into these settings, you want the system to be off. It's gonna, not gonna let you to get in there. So we're gonna go to menu. All right, main menu. It says operation, timer, energy saving, initial setting, maintenance and service. You're gonna wanna go to maintenance. I mean, excuse me. You're gonna wanna go into service and click select. It's gonna ask you a maintenance password. I looked in the manual and the initial password for all these thermostats is 9999. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna go down here. Nine, go to the next one. Nine, 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 and click select. Then we have options, test run, input, maintenance info, settings, check others. We're gonna go down into settings and then function setting. I honestly have no idea what this is. Reference address zero. I'm gonna leave that as it is and it says unit number GRP. I know I looked in the manual it said if you go, if you have the unit number at GRP, whatever settings you do is gonna go to the, is gonna input the settings for every indoor unit that's connected. So I'm just gonna click select. Now it's saying collecting data. Okay, it was confusing at first, but these modes are the settings you can do up to 22. So mode one, all right, and then it says address. So let's go over this real quick. I'm gonna leave the screenshot so you guys can see it, but over here it says, mode two and then that mode stands for thermistor selection for the indoor temperature detection over here we have the settings it says what each number would represent one letter number one represents average temperature reading of the indoor units in operation two is thermistor on the indoor unit three is the built-in sensor for the remote controller if we look here, we're gonna go down to mode two, which is here. And then there's three settings, one, two, and three. And those are, that's gonna be the three settings here. So if you look on mode two, it says it's on one. One stands for the average temperature reading of the indoor units in operation. This is a single circuit. What average temperature is this reading and from where? I, I'm guessing the, the thermistors at the unit. That ceiling seems to be having a draft. It's not that hot in that ceiling and there's no actual air conditioning in the bathroom. You just got a little bit of return air from here. There's a little bit of return air here. So, and there's no, and this bathroom is not hot at all. When I get into the ceiling, it seems like there, maybe there's some sort of draft or something. Look, they have all those holes over there. I see drain pipes and a whole bunch of stuff and then holes in sheetrock. And who knows how well this is sealed off. But yeah, this doesn't feel like no 95, 98 degrees like it is. So if it's reading temperature from here, that's where we could have a problem. So I'm reading 92 degrees here i want it to read temperature here because this is the space where you know the people will be so so for mode two i'm going to want to put it to setting number three which is the built-in sensor for the remote controller so for mode two i'm going to go here i'm going to go to number three if you can see number three is highlighted now here i'm going to click select now it's saying that it's sending the data. And I guess that's done. I'm just gonna click return, return, exit function setting, please wait. Let's see what happens. I'm getting 92 degrees on my thermometer. 
let's see if it goes up i seen the room temperature at 74 at 78 79 80 and it's kind of bouncing around hmm, please wait so okay function setting return 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 let's turn it on Oh, look, look how it jumped up, 89. And that is definitely closer to what the actual temperature is in here. It says 92. All right, so that's definitely a difference. The settings seem to be off here. This doesn't seem like it's reading 100% either. But that is way, way better. All right, so you guys can see it shows 90 degrees and it's 89 in the room. So now things are pretty much adding up. It is burning hot in here. We don't need it to be that hot. 74 is definitely more than enough in heat mode for the winter time. Since we're looking into settings and stuff like that, so this is a Mitsubishi Electric indoor unit, model number PEAD-A42AA7. Okay. Over here, we have a dip switch table. It's going to be the bottom one. I'm going to take a picture so you guys can see it clearly. But for SW1 shows all five dip switches should be off then for sw2 it shows that one two three and four should be off but number dip switch five should be on and then for sw5 the eight dip switches should all be in off it is not correct in here either which kind of not surprised but Jeez, man. When you see a drain hose like that, yeah, I don't know. And look at this. Look how they ran this power wire. It's a freaking extension cord. And they just kind of just ran it in there. You know, that's a hack job. Oh, man. Now, that's the communication wire. It's extension cord. This is the main power. Look how they just ran. Oh, my Lord. That's wild, man. Holy shit. Anyways. Over here are the dip switches. And if you look at it, I'm also gonna take a picture. Every single dip switch is in the off position. Yeah, this is completely unacceptable. Same for this, that's insane. What is this? What the heck? What's going on here? Oh, this is not even being used. What are these wires? This thing is just hanging there. Dude. Oh, this is the actual communication wire going up to the roof. Well, they just use whatever they had. Power is missing. Jeez, man. All right, anyways, those settings, they're all in the off position. SW2 should have dip switch number five in the on position to match this model number. Kind of surprised it didn't come like that because it's already the model number for the unit unless somebody was messing around in here and they just left that at that. I don't know, that's... It's freaking strange. I wouldn't be surprised if the outdoor unit is not set up accordingly as well. I'm just not exactly sure which condensing unit is for here. There's six of them on the roof. All right, guys, we got three units here, three units here. This is, I know, for the 15th floor. We're working on the 14. And what's funny is that I actually worked on this exact unit. I went on my YouTube channel. 
and I look because I, I found out which condensing unit was through that video and that's how I knew it was this anyways we come up here if we got the wrong settings or strange settings on the thermostat on the wired controller and then we have the wrong settings on the indoor we got to check the settings for this outdoor and over there we have a ton of dip switches that we need to make sure is in the correct position according to the model number here's the cover that would be right here that i took off from up top over here they're going to show you the wiring diagram and a couple of things if you look right here i'm going to take a picture so you guys can see it better but it says model select so these dip switches have to be set correctly according to the model specifically sw6 and sw5 those need to be set accordingly to this diagram there are a, a bunch of other switches that are there but pretty much everything else besides what's written here for sw6 and sw5 everything else has to be in the off position here's a picture i took but look at all those other switches so for this model number puz ha42 nka1 for sw6 there are eight switches it's saying that everything should be in the off position except for five six and seven should be in the on position and then sw5 it shows everything should be in the off position and pretty much everything else on these switches all these other switches should be off got a little plastic cover here so i don't know if you guys can see it perfectly but over here sw6 will be right here and it shows five six and seven are in the on position everything else is off and then i'm looking at all the other dip switches and they are all off so the settings here are correct to change the settings for the indoor the outdoor and the indoor power must be off all right i got the power off for that unit and i just put this cover back on everything's good here i'm gonna wait a few minutes to make sure all the power is off for downstairs and we're gonna make that setting switch all right we're back inside i thought this might have been a switch for this unit but that goes nowhere I just confirmed there's no power here. It gets power from the outdoor unit. I'm just gonna see what I can do. I'm gonna fix up these wires a bit. Let's see if I can find something to fit this. All right, here's the board. So over here, this is SW2 in the middle. From the left is number one. And on the right is number five. I'm gonna turn the dip switch on for number five in the upper position. So now we got these settings correct. I also cut these wires. Let me neaten up these connections. There was no connectors on here as you can see. So that's why they just kind of just threw it in there. I went ahead and picked up what I need. All right guys, that looks a lot better. And that looks a lot better for sure. And we actually got the cover back on. As far as this, maybe I'll just put a piece of aluminum tape over it. What are you doing? All right, we reset the power. Room's at 86. All right, we reset the power. The room's at 86. We have it set to 70 and in cooling just because it's so ridiculously hot in here. I got that fan running. And we actually have safe connections to the box now. Also, covers on. We're going to wrap it up from here, everyone. If anyone found this video interesting or helpful, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe as I come out with new videos every week. And I'll catch you all next time.